Daisy Abrams. Yeah. <laughs> Today is President's Day, and while you're not running at the moment, <laughs> at this very second you're not running, a lot of people want to see you on that ticket, first as vice president, and, and you said, you know, that a, a, any Democratic candidate can come and talk to you about being VP. Explain to people why you say this. Okay, so the last, the first time I was on here, Mm -hmm. uh, I got the question about running as VP during the primary, and I very apparently famously said no, because you don't run for second in a primary. Right. Mm -hmm. However, because that conversation started, I'm now getting the question a lot from folks, and the answer is, of course, I would be honored to run for vice president with the nominee. And <laughs> thank you. But there, I mean, it, it's a bit disconcerting because it seems really obnoxious for me to say that out loud since I'm not, you know, no one's asked me. But what I want people to understand You're is that... you in the media. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, the issue is, as a woman of color, especially as a black woman, this is an unusual position to be in for someone to be considered possibly the next vice president. And it would be doing a disservice to every woman of color, every woman of ambition, every child who wants to think beyond their known space for me to say no, or to pretend, oh no, I don't want it. Of course I want it. Of course I want to serve America. Good. Of course I want to be a patriot and do this work. And so I say yes. Yes, and very good. You also see yourself running as president too. Oh, absolutely. At some point, you have absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Again, when someone starts in the mail room and says, I want to be the CEO, we never go, oh my gosh, that's too much ambition. Why should we not want yeah. someone to have the power to fix the problems and the brokenness that we have. I want to do good, and there is no stronger platform mm -hmm. than the President of the United States, and that's a position I wanted to when they hold. So, the presidential primary in Georgia is uh, on March 24th. It is. And uh, I don't think you've endorsed a candidate yet, have you? I have not. Do you think you should? Would you like to? Would you like to do it to here? <laughs> <laughs> this seems to be your job. <laughs> you, do what? you always ask me these questions. <laughs> Why? What did I ask you last time? Do I want to be president? Oh, I did? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and I appreciate it. Yeah. So here's my point. My job right now is to fix our democracy, to uh -huh. make sure that any person who wants to vote in America who is eligible has the right to vote. Yeah. And my best service is to be in that neutral space where it's not about who the nominee is. It's about making sure no matter who the nominee is, any person who wants to go and vote can vote. And that's what we're doing through Fair Fight 2020. Okay. All yeah. right. And I want to talk Fair. about that. Because um, I think that mission is very important. Right? So you have this mission. Um, and we had, I think, a pretty disastrous Iowa caucus. Yes. Yes. Um, you're one of the many saying it's time for Democrats to change it up somehow. What do you suggest? So I, I want to separate these two things. So. The challenge in the Iowa caucus is a systemic challenge. Okay. And we have to remember it not only happened in Iowa, you know, at the beginning of January, of February, it happened in 2012 for Mitt Romney and yes. Rick Santorum. Yes. It's a flaw in the system. Okay. And that's one of the reasons the work we're doing through Fair Fight 2020 is focusing on the presidential primaries because mm -hmm. we have to fix the systems. Mm -hmm. If the systems get fixed, everything else works. Now, then there's the fundamental issue of a caucus. A caucus yes. is by its nature anti-democratic. You have to be able to take off of work, stand in a room for two hours, and have nothing else on your plate. Mm -hmm. And um, congratulations to those who can participate, but 12% of the eligible population participated in the Iowa caucuses. Mm. We need primaries. We need it to be a full contest where you can use the full apparatus of elections to make the decision. And we need those decisions to be made by more than a microcosm of America yes. at the same time. Because right now, the results from the two smallest, two of the smallest states are being seen as you know, predictive of America's values. And that's just not true. It's not true. We've got 50 more contests coming. Mm -hmm. Right. We've got a whole lot of people who want to be heard, and our responsibility is to not start telling people what they've decided before they've even had a chance that's to start right. speaking. Exactly. That's right. You, you, you just said that much more eloquently <laughs> than I've been able to say it for weeks. 
Well, Ms. Abrams, um, 2020 candidate Mike Bloomberg recently donated $5 million to your organization, Fair Fight, and that's the biggest donation you've ever received to date. Um, I've been asking this question about Mike Bloomberg a lot to a lot of people, um, but I think it's an important question. Given that your goal is to make elections fair, like you just said, um, with the hundreds of million dollars Bloomberg is spending on campaign ads and sort of bypassing um, primaries and caucuses right now, which is his choice, but I think it's looking like it's not that much of a fair fight. And I think to a lot of people, it looks like if you have billions and billions of dollars, you can buy your way in to popularity into the election. What, how would you respond to that? I, I would separate these out. First mm -hmm. of all, I am grateful to any person who contributes to Fair Fight. We have more than 100,000 contributors. His check just had a few more zeros on it. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate that because as I said, I'm not endorsing anyone. What we are focused on is making sure that the infrastructure of democracy works. My job is to make sure no matter who shows up that they get to vote for whom they want. Mike Bloomberg is running in the same primary with, I think we're now down to 11 candidates. But the reality is the people who are making the decision will decide if they think he needed to run a different race. That's their decision. My responsibility is to ensure that no matter how they decide and what they value, that their vote gets heard. Okay. Okay. When I said she is often the smartest person in the room, mm -hmm. I was not lying. Right.